up to a Monday Thursday service. Shall we all stand for call to worship? We are Jesus' disciples, following him even as he moves toward the cross. Even as he wraps the towel around his waist, even as he kneels to watch the pillow from the feet of his friends. We are Jesus' disciples, longing to be faithful even as the night grows dark. Even as he prayed to Zoom, even as the hours that oppose the way of Christ press in around us. We are Jesus' disciples, struggling to love others even as Jesus loved us. We are Jesus' disciples, gathered here to worship our God, Creator, Redeemer, and Savior. Our opening hymn, uh, let's say, uh, What Wondrous Love Is This? It's from uh, United Methodist Hymnal 292, verses 1, 2, and 3.
Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people they are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. A lasting ordinance. Our second scripture reading is from the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, twenty-three to twenty-six. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the day he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. The third scripture reading comes from John 13, 1 through 17, 31b through 35. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God that he had come he had come from God and was returning to God so he got up from the meal took up off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples feet drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him he came to Simon Peter who said to him Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, Not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. 
Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is it a mess nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. And we continue with Jesus predicts Peter's denial. When he was God, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the truth, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. On this very night, why do we have to be in service on Monday, Thursday? Many of, us would, many of us would ask, why do we have to come to church on Monday, Thursday? You know, Good Friday is the, the, the day that many churches are celebrating or gathered for Good Friday. But let me tell you, tonight we gather here on this Monday, Thursday, because of what God in Jesus has done. This is Jesus' very last night. What did Jesus do on his very last night here on earth? He gathered his beloved disciples. They were in the upper room, and Jesus brought them together for two things. First, to wash their dirty feet. And second, to feed their soul or their spirit. Those two things reflect of the love that God has for all of us. And that is the message of Monday Thursday. We are command to love one another as Jesus concludes his times, his very last night with his disciples. You know, in the world that we live in, we either be the best or good or competent or gifted or done well to be accepted, to be loved. But here Jesus, regardless of what happened or what's going on, he still loves his disciples and he still loves us, even as sinners. Jesus gathered with his disciples as our first reading talks about the Passover. Everybody gathered in Jerusalem on this very night to celebrate the Passover, to commemorate what God has done to the people of Israel when they were set to free from the oppression and being slaves in Egypt. And in our reading here, it was told that they will continue to commemorate and celebrate the Passover, which means when they were set to free on that very night, they passed through Egypt, and there was a plague that every firstborn of people of Egypt will die. 
but because they put the blood of the land on the doorpost of every homes of the Jewish people, the angels of death will pass over their homes. And on that very night, they will roast their land, take the blood, and then uh, splash it or paint the doorpost. So when the angel of death will come, will recognize this home belongs to the Jewish people, and they will pass over. And it was that very night, they left Egypt, and they started their journey to the promised land. So everybody gathered in Jerusalem on this very night. But that was Jesus' very last night of his mission, of what God called him to come to save the sinners, to save the world, to save you and I. And here, when they gather in the upper room, nobody knows what's going to happen to Jesus. Even Jesus has been telling them what's going to happen. And we see what happened when they gather in the upper room. It is their tradition that they who host the dinner or those who host the gathering must wash their guests or people who come for dinner to celebrate the Passover. But instead, these disciples were rushing to the room. They all gather and sit, recline to with each other to a lower table, which they uh, come together to have the Lord's Supper. Luke Gospel talks about this disciples have been arguing who's the greatest. So we all understand why they didn't want to take the towels and the basin of water and wash their feet. Because they were focused on who's in authority, who's going to be the leader. So instead of having to wash Jesus' feet, they all rush into the table. There's a lower table, and they all really climb. One hand uh, lean onto the middle of the table, and one hand with eat, for them to eat with, and their feet will be stretched stretch out, so all their dirty feet get uh, visible as they see, um, as we continue to share and know what's happening during this very night. And Jesus changed the tradition. Usually they gather, they eat, they have fellowship, and they share. But on this very night, Jesus ch changed the tradition. Jesus got up and took the bread. He broke the bread and offered the, the bread and said, this is my body. I offer to you and you eat and you always remember. That is our second reading, 1 Corinthians talked about. Jesus took the cup and offered to them to drink this symbolized my blood that offered to you to cleanse, to clean your sin, to purify your spirit. So this bread and this cup offered by Jesus to his disciples so they may feel their emptiness, their hunger for peace, for joy, for love. And then after that, secondly, Jesus got up, took off his robe, he picked up the basin, put water, took the towel, and he started going around, washing each and every disciple's feet with his tender hand, loving hand. Touch their dirty feet, and you know there's no cars to drive and come to the Passover. They have been walking all day. The things that they should be doing to Jesus, instead, Jesus took the basin of water, took the towel, and started washing their feet. Can you imagine lying there and notice that their leader, their teacher, their Lord, is doing what the servants should be doing? Touching their feet, can you imagine? When Jesus come and touch their feet, they probably don't want him to touch it, but Jesus is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Talk about the love of God, no matter what you have done or who you are. And come to 
Peter, and you all know Peter always the spokesperson for the disciples throughout the three years that they have been following Jesus. And then when come to Peter, he kneeled down and ready to wash his feet. And Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? I'm sure he felt that. I'm not good enough for you to wash my feet. But Jesus replied, Peter, you do not realize now what I am going to do. But later, you will understand. And Peter said, no, Lord, you shall never wash my feet. And I'm sure that all of us will feel the same way. If someone come to touch your feet or even wash your feet with your bare hand, because you just feel that that is your personal, private part of your, uh, you don't want people to, to touch you, especially your feet, or to wash you. And Peter said, no, Lord, you shall never wash my feet. And what Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Simon Peter said, Okay, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus washed his feet and said, Those who have had a calf need not to wash their feet or their whole body is already clean. You are clean, thou not every one of you. For Jesus knew there's one of them, out of the twelve, one of them will betray him that very night. Again, Jesus changed the tradition and come and fill their emptiness of their body and their soul and their spirit with giving him the bread and the cup, symbolize that he will offer his life for each and every one of them and all of us and for the world. And secondly, on this very night, Jesus washed their dirty feet as Jesus washes all our sins as he will give his life later that very night, shed his blood to set us free. Tonight, as we gather on this Monday, Thursday, that is the message of this night. As Jesus concluded their gathering commemorating the Passover, the very last night of Jesus and his beloved disciple. He commanded each and every one of them to love one another. And that's why we gather on this Monday Thursday to renew our covenant. And if we feel that we are dirty and sinful, that we are not worthy, I want to remind you, this is the night that Jesus is calling each and every one of us to come. Come and make a covenant with him by partaking his body, the blood, the body, the bread, and his blood as we drink from the cup. Jesus is calling you, if you feel dirty, unclean, this is the night that you come. And when you receive the Holy Communion, make a covenant with God. Accept Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. For it doesn't matter what you have been through this year and your past. Christ died for forgiveness of our sins. He wants to be on his knee to touch you, to cleanse you, to heal you from whatever that is going on in your, in your life. Tonight on this Monday third service, it's a command for us to love God with all our hearts, our mind, and our strength and our spirit, and to love our neighbors as Christ loves us. And there's no place that we find peace and joy and hope but to come to Jesus. As we gather here tonight, let us come and confess our sins before we receive his body and his blood and make a covenant that we love God and love our neighbors.
is God loves us. If you continue, if you look on the screen with the confession of our sin, God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost, Jesus, Savior, and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us that new commandment. And I want you to read with me. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved for one another. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that so often our discipleship has been weak when we have failed to serve as Jesus served. When we have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us, when we have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Jesus with our lips and then deny him by our actions. Merciful God, empower us by your spirit to be steady and true to you in every time of trial through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's have a moment of silence and I invite you to have a silence confession before our Lord. And now with the assurance of forgiveness, Jesus said, I come not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news is, my brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give and thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord our God, servant of the universe. Therefore, with your people in all ages and the whole company of heaven, we join the song of unending praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, for Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for Son in the highest. Most holy and merciful God, time and again we turned aside from your way and abused your gift. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Join with me with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to come forward and receive the greatest gift that Jesus offered his beloved disciple in his very life. And be part of that commemoration of the Lord's Supper. So I invite you to come, and if you wanted to pray after, you may pray and kneel and pray, or you may return to your seat and pray. Make a covenant with the Lord on this very night and the command to go and love one another as Christ loves us. Amen. accept what Jesus command each and every one of us to love one another. Let us show that love by giving your offering in the name of Jesus who will die for forgiveness of our sins.
2,000 years ago, we gather here to remember that Jesus gathered with his disciples and offered his life to die on the cross, symbolized by giving the bread and the cup, and also wash their feet. For us to know there is hope for salvation by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and hear your commands to love one another, this gift reflect of our covenant that we make tonight. And may this gift offer with our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we all know, on this night, we will invite you that you may come and take. Uh, we have the black tray, we have the flower, and we have all the items on the table. I invite you to come and take one, a cup or the offering plate or the communion set, and you walk slowly as you exit in silence. And you may leave it in the back behind the table in the narthex. And we exit silently, remembering that Jesus sentenced to death on this night. Because for you, because for me. Yeah. 